<laughs> That's his father's face. That's how his dad could look, just like that, just like that. I didn't realize that's what it looked like. I'd be scared, too. <laughs> Damn. Mildred Harrison still lives in the same house in Akron, Ohio, where she and her late husband, James Sr., raised a large, blended family. I have seven, and his father had seven. So it's 14 children. He's the no, baby. She had six before me. He had seven before me. They had me as 14. Okay, let's see how he likes to correct me all the time. This can be a problem, and we're going live, it's not sweetheart. not a problem. This mm -hmm. ain't live, but they Well, we're going to be see... on TV. Okay, it is what it is. You shouldn't be, I told you, you should never try to argue with your mother. I'm not arguing with you. But it you sounds like it to me no, anyway. It don't. Yeah. Okay. You see what I got to deal with? Did James sleep with you and your husband till he was 12? Yes, he did. Why is that? Because he loved sleeping with his mommy and dad. So he, stop when I it, told stop him... Stop it, stop trying to do that, because this is what it is. She tried to kick me out. My dad would let me in. So stop with the, oh, that's my baby. No, no, no. I'd knock on the door. I'd be like, Dad, can I get in? He'd be like, come on, lift the cover. So i jump in. Sometime when she wake up, all you hear, Jay, why you let that boy in the bed? <laughs> He's gonna always be my baby, and I'm gonna always be his mother. Ain't that right, baby? Sure, Ma. All righty. James and Mildred's baby had some growing up to do at Coventry High School. After being recruited by several major college programs, James Harrison ran into disciplinary issues and was suspended three games his senior season. A lot of it was just self-destructive, immature, thinking I knew everything. Basically, all the other schools had dropped out. By the actual time the offers started coming in, it was only one school left, and that was Kent State. A combination of bad grades and poor conditioning kept Harrison from getting on the field. Well, I called him, and he came into the office, and we sat down, I said, look, James, I'll make you a deal. You do all the things I ask you to do this week. Next week, I'll play you a third of the game. If you do it the following week, I'll play you half the game. If you do it after that, I'll end up starting you. I said, we have agreement? He goes, yeah, we have an agreement. So you see number 16 there, James Harrison. His attitude about school, his attitude about everything changed. They kind of took off from there. He was the best defensive player in the whole league, and it wasn't close. Watch Harrison, number 16. He's going to beat Allen and Gallery's block. In his final game as a senior, Harrison faced conference rival Miami of Ohio and their highly touted freshman quarterback. We played against some bum name, uh, oh, man, I don't remember his name. R Ruth is something, something burger, you know, sacking like five times, you know what I'm saying? It was easy money. James still talks about how he had a field day, but I don't want to give him that much credit. I think four or five is even high. It might have been like one or two. It's like the fish story that it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Harrison was credited with a school record five sacks. While that Miami quarterback would eventually become a Steelers first round pick, Harrison took a longer road to Pittsburgh. He went undrafted in 2002 but the long shot free agent quickly made an impression in Steelers camp. He had a nickname right off the bat and his first nickname with the Steelers was Two Day Vet. I don't even know why they gave me that. Why they say they gave me that? Because that's kind of how he approached it. He rolled in there like a veteran and he'd only been there for like two days. But I remember him going up to someone on the machine, a veteran, and being like, get off my machine. Bray lying, you know, Bray go exaggerate. Two-day vet always had something quick to say back to the coaches. Like, it was a day of practice. He intercepted the ball, and Tim Lewis was like, run to the end zone. He was like, oh, is that what I'm supposed to do with it? <laughs> so me, Gilded, and everybody, we laughing like, this guy going to get cut. That attitude that they were getting, that was more of a defense mechanism because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So instead of it being like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm like, yeah. Let's go right there, perimeter play action. Let's go, let's go. My first OTAs, the play starts 
and I go freeze brain dead. I throw my hands up. I'm like, hey, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Get me out of here. Like, in the middle of the play. And just stop. Well, don't stop. If in the middle of a play, you can't just stop because you made a mistake. You shouldn't be making those mistakes. Let's go. Then he would take himself out. Where are you going? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing yet. You can't just take yourself out of a game. Back in the huddle. Back in the huddle. Let's go. Get the snap. And the way he responded earlier, just quitting on things, kind of just, like, I don't think this guy's ever going to get it. Harrison was among the final cuts and spent the 2002 season on the practice squad. In 2003, he returned to Steelers camp, but was cut twice in three weeks. Near the end of the 2003 season, he was signed by the Baltimore Ravens. Number 53, James Harrison. And sent to play for the Rhine Fire in NFL Europe. The Ravens brought him to camp in 2004, but released him after just a few days. In three attempts to make an NFL roster, James Harrison had been cut a total of four times. So I just sat around that whole off season and I was like, if I don't get, you know, picked up, you know, after this, then it's just not meant to be and in the car. So I mean, I'm cool with it. I'll just get a regular job like everybody else, you know, put in your 40, 50, 60 hours a week, whatever it is, get your paycheck and, you know, keep it moving. 